What's better than playing Clash Royale with your friends? You're at your house, they're at their house, and you're emoting back and forth? Well, play in face-to-face -face so you can see the look in their eyes when you destroy their towers and take all their glory. And guess what? That's back. More on that later. Hello! Welcome back to Three Crowns, your bi-weekly home for Clash Royale esports news and beyond. I'm Rich Slayton. That's Andrew Guy. And joining us on this one today, two-time regional champion for Clash Royale League, Joshua A.C. Sharon. Andrew, we're reaching sort of the midway point of the summer. A lot of gold has been given out. What's on our docket today? Well, like you were talking about, man, we had the first in-person event in over two years. No golden ticket given away, but more on DreamHack a bit later. Talking about golden tickets, two more golden ticket events are starting right now. More information on how you guys can join. Battle banners have joined the game, so now you can see how bad I am before we even start playing. And lastly, Mohammed Light picks up a uh, third golden ticket Kind of, the Snapdragon Pro Series has come to an end after months and months of competition. We got to our top eight over in the Europe, Middle East, North Africa region, and it all started with a big time grand final, wait, oh sorry, first bracket matchup between Mohammed Light and Morton. It was a great best of three, taking Momo to the distance. This is one of the only games that Mohammed Light lasts all day long. You see that miner going to the back of the tower, the Archer Queen up high, that late ability gonna be just enough. Wall Breakers aren't enough, Electro Spirit is not enough, AQ connects for one more shot as the NATO pulls it back, Morton evens things up, but then is eliminated. Let's hop over to one of our three Frenchmen, Inaraj versus Aslan here from Turkey. And you can see, Aslan had this game completely sewn up when you watch it back on VOD. However, it was these late Golden Knight connections that tied this game up and made it dangerously close for Aslan. That Mother Witch is doing work, but you can see right here, that Golden Knight connection one two three four five six seven gets on top of the tower although there is no good building and great defense for Inaraj Aslan ends up taking this set two two one and that's a very important win right there the biggest thing here as we look back at our bracket Mohammed Light is at the bottom Viper Aslan at the top so our semifinals felt a lot like a golden ticket moment so if you are Viper if you are Aslan you're just hoping Momo takes that bottom set and you win the top one so Aslan starts right here strong with a golem play against ooh, who knows giant skeleton mortar should be okay right doing okay defensively this game isn't too far out of reach golem bursts on the tower baby dragon is there but then look at this beautiful nato to get that baby drag on viper hits the panic button just a minute too late and that's gg well played now Mohammed light going up against quentin another frenchman here trying to Beat the best in the game, playing one of the strongest win conditions. The Magic Archers lined up, the Giants on the tower, the Brawlers on the tower, and now Aslan 100% has a golden ticket to our World Finals. But still, you got to play through that best of three Grand Finals. And here we go. Momo does what Momo does too. And oh, he gives us the Magic Archer. Another golden ticket to the greatest in the game. However, he has to pass it along to Aslan for the second time in two months. Momo has given away a golden ticket but luckily for everyone else in the world he can't win a ticket he can't even compete in this next great competition rich yes that's absolutely right finally something that mo can't win and that's the copa all-stars event for north america and latin america moving on into its fourth phase let's look at those players again 32 players remaining to get a chance for that golden ticket and of course a fifty thousand dollar prize pool you can watch this stage four from july 5th to july 12th what a great list of names here and you can go ahead follow along all the action find out where to watch that stage four at ecopagg on twitter and of course at esports Royale EN. That is our fifth golden ticket, but the sixth golden ticket that anybody, including Mohammed Light, can compete for. Royale Masters is back. The gold edition this time. The final golden ticket before we get into our summer series. There is a three-week open qualifier event where you can earn points from July 2nd, 3rd, 9th, 10th, 16th, and 17th. And if you don't qualify through those first three weeks, you can do the last chance
Rockets qualifier July 23rd and 24th. Go to royale.masters.gg for more information. Now, those are two competitions that take place online, but we are finally returning to offline, in-person, real-life events as we just did this weekend in Valencia, Spain for DreamHack, and things kicked off in what better fashion for an offline event? Well, with Bob the Rock against, that's right, Surgical Goblin, one of the greatest of all time, the most decorated player of all time, playing live on stage once again. Here he was leading for a long time, just showing off just how hard it is to deal with this three Musketeers mirror pump deck. And you see way ahead, but Bob the Rock able to surge right past him. Pun intended and take that one, game number two in this matchup. You see Surgical Goblin nearly beats out that Lightning, but that does end his run in the top eight. Good three-day tournament, good performance, but Bob the Rock takes the win there. On from one star to another, another former world champion in Team Queso's Ruben up against Ligon. This was an amazing game for Ruben playing against a bad matchup. Really, really great matchup for Nico Rubin. You see him pumping his fist. He knows he just played out of his mind to go ahead and get this one back. Other matches in the top eight. Lucas up against Bale. Lucas all the way in Spain from Brazil for this one. Plays the mirrored three Musketeers in an inopportune moment. Bale takes advantage, takes the tower, and later on goes on to take the match. Back up to Bob the Rock against Ruben in one of our two semifinals. Look at Bob's face right now. This was a dirty, dirty snipe in game number three. He's playing Lava Clone, sees Ruben playing Mother Witch, knows it's over. Ruben gets to him, but has to get ready for a big matchup. Waiting to see who he'll play. It's Morton against Bale on the other side. Bale way in the lead. Morton fighting from behind at the end, stacking Royal Ghosts, stacking Royal Giants and pre-empting that Hog Rider on the right-hand side with the Zappies to make sure there's not a good spot for Bale to break on through. 103 to 330 to 272. Bale trying to get there in time. Can't get it done. Morton gets the win, but no big smiles yet because he knows he still has a whole lot of work to do. Here we go, game number one of the championship. 5,000 euros to the victor, and this Hog just gets body blocked and shut down by the Ewiz. 45 seconds left, and look at this little play. Gets the Magic Archer through, lined up. Morton has fallen victim to Magic Archers quite famously in the past. Not today. Later in the same match, game number two, Ruben pulls the cannon cart in, but it stays alive. And look at this, turns right to tower and seals the game, seals the championship for Morton. Morton getting that big number one that's often been so elusive for him, does it here against one of the other all-time greats in the game. Nothing but respect between Morton and Ruben, but Morton gets to hoist that trophy there. The championship for the young German, and one that I know a lot of fans at home are very, very excited to see. Congrats to everyone who played there. So much fun to see y'all face-to-face playing each other in the same room one more time. And one big congratulations again to Morton. But this was not a golden ticket event. And there are still only two golden tickets left before we get into our summer of CRL where the remaining uh, 10 spots for Clash Royale League World Finals will be given away, but still we have two more in this run. And for more on that, let's go to Joshua AC Sharon with his picks on who might be those winners. Two golden tickets left. Here are my three players to win it. Number one, I have to start off. I mean, it, it, it's obvious. It's Viper. That man has been so consistent in all these tournaments. You know, I check his Twitter account every nine days. The man is tweeting, oh, I won $4,000. I won $9,000. Here's me finishing first in this competition. It, it just, he hasn't been able to put it together. And, you know, this is going to be, this is going to be for every single one of these players. What's missing for them? For Viper, it's, it's, you know, once it becomes that top four, top eight range, he just doesn't have it right now. And it doesn't make any sense. The man is so talented. You know, he's always qualifying. He's always qualifying. He's always cashing for a reason. Like he he does everything right. He, he even ran Hog XC NATO in one of the more recent competitions. He does everything right for the viewers, for the gameplay, for himself. It's just one thing missing. And... You know, a lot of the time, that's just him going against Muhammad Light. I, I can't even fault him for that at that point. And then number two, we got Wallace. This man, you know, we've seen a lot from him. The past two to three years have been incredible for him. He's been crushing the competition. He's been doing so well. His, his deck choices are really good as well. I was looking at the Royale API for him 
And it was nice because every single time I look at these tournaments, it's, oh, you know, you're either running these four to five decks or you're using complete off meta and usually the off meta loses. For him, it's cool. It, it stacks up well against other, you know, the, the four to five consistent decks, but he always has a variation. He has RG Lightning Tombstone instead of RG Fireball Tombstone. He's a smart and innovative player. At the same time, something's missing with him as well. He, he finished 22nd on ladder last season. And really, if you want to be winning these competitions, you got to be looking for that top three, top five, top seven range because you need that consistency. You need to be, you know, okay with the pressure. And sometimes it, it, it feels like, you know, that could be the one thing he's missing. It, we just, it, we need to see more from him. And, and that's all right. I, I wouldn't be shocked to see him do well in these upcoming competitions. Those two guys are really my top two. For my top three, it's kind of a dark horse pick because I think those two guys are just so talented and so strong as players. Number three, that's gonna be Ian77. Look, at the time of this recording, he just posted on Twitter, oh, I'm number one on ladder. You, you don't get that, I, I don't care where you are, I don't care if it's the first eight minutes of season. If you're gonna be able to be number one on ladder, that's impressive. At the same time, when it comes to competitions, he performs well. His cycle gameplay is unparalleled. The man is a machine. He went 18 and one, and I think it was the second stage of the Bernard Chong Masters Edition. I mean, you don't go 18 and one without being one of the most gifted and, and strongest players in the game. But, and, and, and we were talking about it before the show started today. W what is the one thing that all these players can do better? get luckier draws you know in, instead of the group of death it's the 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 player of death can you be on the other side of the bracket as muhammad like that's the main thing these players need to be working on at the end of the day all three of these guys have the potential to win have the potential to do well in the world finals once we get there it's just whether or not they can put it together <sighs> and really especially viper i want to see them be able to do that anyways that's it for you know my choices I'm going to throw it to Andrew and Andrew only. What did I do to you, Josh? What did I... You know what I'm going to do is I'm going to dissect your picks here. Uh, Andrew, go first. Uh, anything you think Josh totally got wrong? Anybody you think Josh snubbed? And let's call it a snub. Let's really get him some Twitter heat right now. I actually really like the picks that he has. I think all three of them are really excellent players. I am surprised there's no Lucas X Gamer popping into that conversation. Mm -hmm. We haven't seen a lot of him over the last few months, but he's still out there grinding. He's still out there playing Immaculate Clash Royale, but can he put it together before we get to World Finals? I think that's the biggest missing piece for me, but I'm not upset at the three that he chose. I think all three of those guys are excellent players, and I agree. If we don't see Viper at World Finals, I'm going to be a little shocked and totally bummed. Yeah, I mean, the hard part for Viper, and the reason why I'm not picking Viper or Morton for these golden tickets, is they only have one more shot. That's Royale Masters, right? So you only have one person in the world, because that's including Japan, that's including Latin America, North America, that's including everywhere. That golden ticket at Royale Masters is going to be so competitive to get. Uh, I agree with you. Lucas should be on that list. There's a few NA and uh, LATAM players who have not one but two more golden ticket chances with Copa All-Stars and then with Royale Masters. So I think they're the one best chances to get one of those two golden tickets. And then the then the crazy thing, you know, I think Viper, uh, Morton, I mean, Wallace has a pretty good chance for both those as well with him being in Brazil. But I think it's going to be really curious to see what happens with some of those players who've been bubbling all summer all year in this competition. What happens when we get into the actual CRL Summer Series? More on that coming your way maybe uh, kind of soon here, Andrew. And for everyone to see that information, what do they have to do to make sure they don't miss out? I'm going to scream at you guys this time. Make sure you're subscribed to the channel. Turn on notifications. We have big time world finals news coming your way next episode. We have all these great competitions that we're breaking down for you. Who won and how you can join and win. Esports.ClashRoyale.com is another place to do it. Esports Royale, EN on Twitter. And of course, you can follow the three of us at our respective Twitter handles. That is the best way to stay in the conversation, especially coming back to Three Crowns every two weeks. And that's it for today's show for everyone here at Three Crowns, meaning just Andrew and myself and definitely not Joshua A.C. Sharon. We'll see you back here next time for more Clash Royale Esports. Bye, Josh.